Another mistake is thinking that Christian theology is by definition Trinitarian. If that were so, then Christian theology wouldn't have existed until sometime in the fourth century. A final and common confusion, even among professional theologians, is that early mainstream theologians weren't exactly Trinitarians, but were proto-Trinitarian, partially Trinitarian, not quite perfectly Trinitarian, quasi-Trinitarian, etc. <laughs> we will see that this is not so. Let's go back then to perhaps around 50 years after the last New Testament book was written. So there's the New Testament era, you know, roughly up to, up to the year 100 or so. Our first theologian is the fascinating Justin Martyr, so-called because he was executed by the Romans for refusing to make legally required pagan sacrifices. When threatened with death, Justin and his friends told the prefect of Rome, quote, do what you will, for we are Christians and do not sacrifice to idols. Justin tells us, that he tried out a number of schools of Greek philosophy before becoming a Christian, still much influenced by what he thought was the best of them, Platonism. He argued for official toleration of Christianity. And in a fascinating book, fascinating book called Dialogue with Trypho the Jew, probably based on a real conversation he had in the 130s, he argues about Old Testament prophecies and many other theological matters. Does he urge his Jewish friend to believe in the triune God? Or is he Unitarian, or neither one? Let's hear some of what he says. So Justin says, There never will be, nor has there ever been from eternity, any other God except him who created and formed the universe. Furthermore, we do not claim that our God is different from yours, for he is the God who, with a strong hand and outstretched arm, led your forefathers out of the land of Egypt. Nor have we placed our trust in any other, for indeed there is no other, but only in him, whom you have also trusted, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And in Justin's first apology, he says, quote, We are not atheists, since we worship the maker of this universe. Our teacher of these things is Jesus Christ. And we will show that we worship him rationally, having learned that he is the son of the true God himself, and holding him in the second place. Yeah, so in his first, in his first apology, he says, we are not atheists since we worship the maker of this universe. Our teacher of these things is Jesus Christ, and we will show that we worship him rationally, having learned that he is the son of the true God himself, and holding him in the second place, and the prophetic spirit in the third rank. So far we've seen that the one true God for Justin is the God of the Jews, and is one and the same as the father of Jesus. Justin is a Unitarian. But one may wonder if he's a Trinitarian because he mentions worshiping or honoring the Son and Spirit in addition to God. But he is not worshiping the Trinity as the one God. He's plainly said who the true God is, and that is the Father. Also, he ranks them, presumably in degree or kind of honor which is due to each, into first, second, and third places. Also, it is clear that unlike many modern people, Justin does not reserve religious honor to God alone. Thus. In his first apology, he says, quote, We are atheists with, with reference to God such as these. In the context, he means the demons worshipped by pagans. But not with reference to the most true God, the father of righteousness and temperance and other virtues, who is unmixed with evil. But we worship and adore both him and the son who came from him and taught us these things, and the army of the other good angels who follow him and are made like him and the prophetic spirit giving honor in reason and truth and to everyone who wishes to learn handing over without grudging what we have been taught Justin is rhetorically emphasizing the wideness of Christian piety rebutting the charge that Christians are godless perhaps he means that Christians honor angels only in the minimal sense that they believe in and teach about them my purpose isn't to defend Justin's statement but just to point out that Justin is willing to talk of worshiping and adoring various beings in addition to God. So the fact that he worships and adores the Son and Spirit doesn't show that he thinks them to be equally divine with the Father. In fact, we know that he does not so believe. Justin's Platonism makes him think it impossible that the transcendent God should have himself created. He can't, as it were, get his hands dirty making the material world. So when it was time to create, he caused the word, the pre-human Jesus, to exist, who then created for him. 
Justin also thinks it impossible that God should have appeared in Old Testament theophanies. This role, too, he assigns to the Logos, to the pre-human Son. The status of the Holy Spirit for him is unclear. In any case, the Son is not equally divine with the Father because he is not co-eternal with the Father and because he is caused to exist by the Father. Justin is not a Trinitarian, but he is a Unitarian. One can easily be distracted by Justin's God talk. Actually, this is a source of confusion in all four of our authors, often exacerbated by their translators. When you see the English word God there, capital G, the author may have in mind one of three things. They may have written one of three things. If the Greek has the definite article, the word the, ha in Greek, what is being translated as ha theos, literally the God, which we have a long tradition of translating as God with a capital G. This has an initial capital letter like a proper name. This makes sense for the phrase the God is a singular referring term, the function of which is not to describe, but simply to refer, just like a proper name like Mike or Sally. However, the author may have written only theos in Greek, or deus in Latin, a language which has no definite article. Such is often translated as a god, but is sometimes translated as god, with a capital G. The use of this phrase would normally be descriptive. It would be saying what kind of being someone is, just as I might specify that Skippy is a cat rather than a human. Finally, one must remember that neither language has quotation marks. If I say there are several mics in this room, I'm not naming a single person by that word, nor am I talking about a kind of being, as with the term God, lowercase, uh, human, or cat. What I'm saying is that there are several people here called Mike. Similarly, in these author authors, often what they are saying uh, when they say that Jesus is Theos or Deus, uh, they mean that he is another being in addition to God who can be called by the title or name God. So, I mean, it would be more accurate in those cases to translate that Jesus is God with the, with the quotation marks. That is, he's, it's like saying he's another Mike. He's another one that goes by this name. Justin frequently makes points about God language for instance, he argues from Platonic premises that often the God referred to in Old Testament texts must be the Son of God rather than the one true God. 